How can anyone, whether they want to work in a language school or privately from their own laptop anywhere in the world, create a rewarding and impactful career teaching English as a second language, even if they are just starting out or have no teaching experience or ability? Hi, my name is Lynette Kim and here on the TESOL Talk podcast, I aim to answer that very question. Building up your confidence in the ESL classroom is really important and there are ways to do this and I have spoken previously about confidence in the classroom and how focusing on your students, their needs and, and what they um, what you're doing for them is really important and it means that you don't have to focus on yourself so much and this is true. But at the same time, you do, for some teachers particularly, and new teachers, it is good to build up your confidence. But what I'm talking about here is not as a person, but as a teacher, confidence in handling the materials, in handling situations, confidence working with course books and um, other published materials and confidence in explaining things, breaking things down um, and articulating well. So there's a few things that can help you a lot. Number one is get incredibly familiar with the course books that you are teaching. Know the units, know the tasks in the lessons, understand, prepare really well. Now, by this, I do not mean script the lesson. No way. I, you should not be doing that. But I mean just understanding what the task is asking of the students, what skill is being utilised. Is the task, and, and the course books will tell you, is it vocabulary, is it grammar, is it listening, speaking, reading or writing, what is the task actually um, having as a goal at the end of it. So be familiar with that, know where you're aiming with it and then get familiar with how to break down the instructions for the task, how to demonstrate it if the students are low level um, and also how to um, Maybe if the lesson is a bit too easy, how to beef up that task and have a think about this when you're preparing. How could I make this task more um, demanding if I needed to because it was too easy for my students? So getting familiar with course books. I mean, I don't want you to torture yourself here, but generally if you're teaching at the same school, you're going to be teaching the same course books over and over. And it's great because after you've taught a level, um, the same course, book and you come back and you do it again honestly you'll know those course books really well and you'll prepare less and less because it'll be familiar you'll understand it and you'll have your additional resources so always keep those in folders or on a usb now in part of this is also practicing breaking down and explaining things clearly in a verbal sense but also how you're going to demonstrate or explain things on the whiteboard. Now, I'm an absolute big advocate for getting students to explain tasks, uh, read them out from the course books to the class, and then explain them, getting students up on the whiteboard. But the onus is on you, the teacher, and you need to know how you will do this for any situation first. If you understand that, you can allow the students to have a go, but if they're low level, you, trust me, are going to have to get up there and do it yourself and do it properly. And I've had tasks where I've had to break them down into three simpler tasks before. And then I've had tasks where I've had to extend them and make them more difficult by adding in additional vocabulary, additional questions, um, or drawing more out of the material. So if you understand how to do this, then you're going to keep building up your confidence as a teacher. Now, another thing that really helps get confidence is your voice. Enunciating properly, speaking deliberately, speaking clearly. You don't have to repeat yourself. You don't get students looking at you quizzically because they didn't hear clearly enough what was said. 
Make sure you're not speaking too fast for them. You don't want to speak quickly, but make sure you're not slowing it down so much that it's ridiculous on the other end of the scale. So using your voice well, using body language well, but control body movements. Don't If you've got nervous twitches, control this stuff. Don't walk around. It's distracting. I know there's teachers that like to walk around their class and like to posture, sit on the edge of desks and do all kinds of interesting looking things, but that's not what you're there for and it will ruin your confidence because you're focusing on body movement and too many other things. So control that and also... Practice keeping an even keel, um, so to speak, if things go wrong. So, I mean, and they invariably do. I mean, you can't control everything. It's just that's the beauty of the ESL classroom. So just be ready. If something does go wrong, um, just take a minute, take a breath, breathe in, breathe out. You'll have that moment to be able to do it while the students are all looking at each other, laughing or whatever, because, you know, someone's done something silly, someone's fallen off a chair. Um, in my case, your pants split. I mean, it can happen. If, it's gonna, if there's something that can happen, it will happen. But when these things happen, just take a breath. Don't let yourself get flustered. It's just life getting in the way. Don't over-explain. Don't make a big deal about it. Just like, yep, okay, this stuff's happened. And now we're going back into the lesson. And if you remain even, you remain calm, you don't, I mean, you can have a bit of a laugh and just like, oh my God, you know, and then just get on with it. And then it all just blows over. So these things, keeping these things in mind, just work on these things and bit by bit, you'll gain confidence because you'll understand what you're doing. So if things get in your way, you know the material well enough that you can go back to it and recognize where you're at and how you're going to handle that task and at what point you are within a task. You're also going to not have to worry that if students ask hairy questions that you can't break it down enough to explain to them because they weren't able to follow. And you're going to be able to use your voice to control the class. I really love it when the class is too raucous and you actually use your voice by being silent and they all just stop and go and you hear a pin drop and that's really good because that just pulls the class back into line. They go, oh, oh, hang on, something's happening here. Why is the teacher suddenly quiet? So get used to using your voice and enunciating really well and students know from your tone what's coming. They know what hang on, something's changing, no, we're changing activities, this activity is over, they, they will just feel and read you as a teacher and they will understand and, and that means that you have to control less and your confidence will build because you will feel like you know what you're doing and you know how to do what you need to do and it's working. So these are the best ways to start building up your confidence as an ESL teacher and I will go into more in future.